Buongiorno a tutti, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi parliamo della voglia di iniziare cose nuove. Hi everyone, my name is Charlotte and today we'll be talking about wanting to start new things and more specifically nuovi inizi, new beginnings and il verbo iniziare. Okay, so we're looking at some um, citazioni delle persone famose. So we're looking at some quotations today from famous people, mostly, yeah, all famous people, <laughs> um, using either the noun inizio or l'inizio, which is the beginning or the start, um, and conversely the noun la fine, which means the end, or possibly the verb iniziare or cominciare, smettere, so that's to start or to stop, to quit doing something. So starts and finish, to start, to finish, that kind of uh, stuff. So let's have a look. Vediamo qui, ho già scritto um, uh, le citazioni. Allora, vediamo che cosa abbiamo qua. Ok. Prima di tutto abbiamo il verbo iniziare iniziare so it's a little bit like the verb to initiate in English so to bring about to start something to make something happen um, what else have we got up here we've got my andiamo un po' più così iniziare so it's an A-R-E verb but it's also got an I before the A-R-E ending so we've got this I which even though it's um, a, a, noun, a noun, even though it's a, a vowel, sorry, um, it is actually part of the stem of the verb. So inizi is the stem and then are is the ending, right? So I've translated that verb as starting, beginning, right? As in the act of starting or beginning something. So here's the first quotation, numero uno qua. Um, l'inizio è sempre oggi l'inizio è sempre oggi so um, there's a, oh scusa just hit the microphone with my pen scusatemi l'inizio very useful that's um, linked to the, the verb above which is iniziare so l'inizio is one way of saying the start okay L'inizio, so it's a masculine noun, it starts with a vowel, an I, and then therefore the article is not il inizio, it's l apostrophe. L'inizio, okay, si pronuncia uh, come se fosse una sola parola, okay, so you pronounce that as if it's like one word rather than two. E, so that's from the verb essere, which is one of the auxiliary verbs in Italian. The other one is avere, which means to have, but this one is essere, which means to be. So the start or the beginning is sempre, means always. Last word there, oggi. Uh, o double G I. So um, when you have a G and an I in Italian, it makes a soft G sound, okay? Um, if it was followed by an E, it would also have that soft J, J sound. G, G, gelato, ice cream, or G, or Giovane, okay? Like Giovanni, scusa, like the name, Giovanni, or Giovane, the, the adjective young. They've got this G and an I, which is a G sound as opposed to G and an A, G and an O, G and a U, which would be GO or GA or GU. Right? So it's not a hard G, it's a soft G when it's followed by an I. L'inizio sempre oggi. So that means the start or the beginning is always today. I like that, it's very sort of in the present. Um, that's by Mary Shelley. Author of Frankenstein. Credo di sì, I think so. So, numero due, again, we have the same 
noun, l'inizio, l'inizio è, so again, it is, the beginning is, so that's from the verb essere, it's the present tense, he, she, it, is, third person singular, io, tu, lui, lei, that's the third person singular because it's talking about one thing, it is, the beginning is, la parte, the part, più importante del lavoro. Okay, so what we have here is a comparison, or, yeah, is that a comparison? The most important part. Ah, it's a superlative, it's telling you it is the most something, or the least something. Well, the most is the superlative, so la parte, so the start is the part, più importante, most important, or the most significant, importante can mean significant, del lavoro, del is d plus il, the preposition d which means of, plus uh, the masculine article il, so when you have D plus il in Italian, it changes to del. And that means of the, and here we have another noun, lavoro. Lavoro means work or job. So, chi ha detto questo? Il filosofo Platone. So the philosopher Plato. L'inizio è la parte più importante del lavoro. Over più, over the U in più, we have a little uh, grave accent. Più, meno, more, less. So if you were saying that the start is the least important, you could say l'inizio è la parte meno importante del lavoro. For example, the opposite meaning. Più plus adjective importante so la parte is a feminine noun but it happens to end with an e most regular feminine nouns end with an e when they're in the singular oh scusa when they're in the plural completely opposite like for example una penna le penne right but sometimes we have words that end with an e in the singular sometimes a masculine like il ristorante sometimes a feminine like la parte and just, it's quite convenient really, normally an adjective in Italian will agree in gender and number with the, with its subject, with whatever noun or person it's describing. So we're talking about the part, the start is the part which is the most important. So this adjective happens to also end with an E and it could therefore, it could be used with something that's masculine. Um, or something that's feminine, and you wouldn't have to change the ending. So it doesn't end with an A or an O. Yeah, O, masculine adjective, like bello. And it doesn't end with an A, like a normal, like a regular feminine singular adjective, like bella. Instead it ends with an E. And it can be used to describe either masculine or feminine nouns or subjects. Importante, okay? Importante. It's not an E sound. Um, it's an so the start is the most important part of the job or the work, and um, chi l'ha detto? Platone. So uh, Plato was responsible for saying that. Grazie a, a lei. Okay. Um, grazie a lei, Plato. Right, so I'm addressing Plato there. Uh, right, number three. This is a bit longer. Said by un britannico, molto molto famoso, molto ben conosciuto, uh, Winston Churchill. Okay, so the uh, wartime um, prime minister of the UK. E che cosa ha detto lui? Ha detto. Okay, so these are obviously translated into Italian, but this is how the Italians would read and understand these comments in order to know what exactly the meaning of the quotation was. So it's not necessarily. These are not translate. These are not quotations that were in Italian to begin with. Okay, they're in various languages, but this is the Italian version of them. So, lui ha detto 
ora questa non è it's hard to see that isn't it really hard to ora that means now or right now questa that means this referring back to ora non è is not or now uh, actually that's just a sort of temporal place a temporal marker that's talking about ora questa non è la fine non è la fine I have a question. So, non è la fine. Questa non è la fine. My question to myself is whether questa agrees with la fine, because even though it's in the negative, non è la fine. Questa non è la fine. I think that questa here, this, is an A at the end because it refers to la fine. La fine means the end. So it's the opposite of l'inizio. L'inizio is the noun which means the start. La fine is the, the one that means the end. And that, that happens to be another feminine noun that ends with an E in the singular, okay? La, that's normal, isn't it? The, something feminine, singular. Fine. Fine. Okay? Fine. It's a bit like in French, uh, la fin. Fin. At the end of a film, it comes up with F I N, that means end. Fine is just the Italian equivalent end or the, like the bit where it stops, it stops. So, this is not the end now. Now, this is not the end. Non è nemmeno l'inizio. So, we've got negatives here. Not, non è la fine. Now, this is not the end. Non è nemmeno l'inizio della fine. Non è means it's not. Non è nemmeno. Nemmeno means even. It's not even. So we've got the negative um, conjugation. By putting non in front of a conjugated verb, it becomes negative. Non è is the opposite of è. È is the positive or affirmative. Non è is the negative. Non è nemmeno, nemmeno means not even. L'inizio della fine. So this is not the end. It is not even. It is not even the start of the end. So let, let's have a look at that phrase. L'inizio della fine. So what we have here is another combined or articulated pre uh, preposition. Della. So della is di, which means of, plus la. Di più la. Fano, that means the lake will become. Those two things become della. So we've got di plus il becomes del. Di plus la becomes della. And we have two L's, okay, della. So instead of di la, non è nemmeno l'inizio di la fine we say non è nemmeno l'inizio della fine so let's look at what Winston Churchill will say this now is not the end it is not even l'inizio della fine the beginning of the end l'inizio della fine the start of the end ma, that means but ma è, it is Forse, maybe, perhaps. La fine del dell'inizio. So perhaps it is, maybe, the end dell'inizio. Maybe it is perhaps the end of the beginning. So let's have a look at that. We've got um, D plus il becomes del in front of a masculine singular noun of the job, of the work, del lavoro. D plus la becomes della in front of a noun that's feminine like della fine. And then we've got dell'inizio. So what's happening there, and it might not be easy to see, is that we've got a masculine noun that starts with a, um, a vowel. So, 
initio starts with an I. So where you have a combined preposition D plus il in front of vowel, so a masculine noun that starts with a vowel, or scusa, not il because it starts with a vowel, so it's an L apostrophe. Where you've got D plus L apostrophe, that changes to del, but it actually has a double L. Inizio. Okay? Del inizio. Così. Instead of del inizio. It might sound almost exactly the same. Del inizio. Del inizio. But that's not what we want to use in the written form, okay? So D plus L apostrophe is D E double L apostrophe. Del inizio. And that's the same for masculine or feminine nouns that start with a vowel. Okay, so the point is here, it's D plus L apostrophe. It just happens to be a masculine noun. So that was uh, not quite about new beginnings, but it does have some uh, words that relate to beginning and end. So, ora questo non è la fine. So this now is not the end. Non è nemmeno l'inizio della fine. It's not even the beginning of the end. Ma è, but it is. Forse, maybe, perhaps, la fine dell'inizio, but maybe it is the end of the beginning. I hope I read that right. So let's have a look at uh, number four. Il segreto per farsi strada. So the secret for getting ahead or for making one's way or for getting through something. Farsi strada is to make one's way, right? To make one's way. A bit like that, uh, it's a reflexive verb, farsi, and then strada is like the way that you go. The strada can also mean like street or, you know, yeah, street. So, make the secret to making one's way, or the secret for making one's way, per farsi strada è di iniziare. We've got the verb iniziare. So, the secret. Fa molto molto caldo, ok? <laughs> Devo dire perché. Faccio così. So it's very hot here today. Il segreto, so there's a masculine noun. Il segreto, the secret to or of making one's way or getting ahead, progressing basically, carving a route out. Um, il segreto per farsi strada è di iniziare. So the secret is, again, è. I've missed out the little accent, the grave accent. With a grave accent like that, that means it is, as in il segreto per farsi strada è, it is, di iniziare. So it is to, in, uh, to start, to get started. Iniziare. Of course, if you want to achieve something, you've got to start, haven't you? Excellent. So that's the verb iniziare. I'm not sure if we've got any conjugations of the verb iniziare within this, within these... Um, no, we haven't, actually. We've got some alternative words like cominciare, which we're going to see, and we've got the infinitive iniziare, we've got the noun, l'inizio, and we've got the, the, synony um, the antonym, which is the opposite, la fine, but we don't have, like, iniziamo. Let's start. We don't have a conjugated version of the, no of the verb iniziare, so anyone who's a member of my club will get the conjugations there and their translations in English. And there's also some a link to this video here for club members to follow and watch whenever they want, whenever they want to revisit this verb, all these quotations. And then there's going to be at least one link to some further reading on the topic. Okay, because that's always useful. Right, numero cinque, il fallimento, the failure, or failure in general, it doesn't always have to translate into English as the failure, right, unless you're specifying a specific failure, the failure of that teacher was his drinking, <laughs> for example, but here we're just talking about failure, so, il fallimento è, oh, there's the, the essere in the third person singular present tense. 
Il fallimento è. Maybe you can see that, okay. La sola opportunità. Now I think maybe that should be la sola. Solo, sola. Hmm. Put a question mark over that. There must be a reason why it's solo in this version of the quote that I found. The only la sola opportunità. I'll figure it out. Um, per, the only opportunity to or for. Per. Cominciare. So, cominciare is like a synonym of iniziare. It means to start or to begin something, to commence, if you like. Com. In. So, it's got that I A R E sort of ending as well, like iniziare. Cominciare. And it's also got a C and an I next to each other, which is, which is a chi sound. Cominciare. Chi are. Il fallimento è la sola o il sol. Scusa, la solo. La sola just doesn't make sense to me, so I'm not sure why I've written it like that. Devo verificarlo. I'll have to check it afterwards. Uh, per cominciare di nuovo. Di nuovo. That's like a little set phrase. That means again. To start again. Um, di nuovo together means doing something ancora una volta. Uh, again, di rifare qualcosa, to redo something, again, con più intelligenza, Ooh, with more intelligence, or with more, like, knowledge, maybe, just more cleverly, con più intelligenza, I didn't tell you who said this, or wrote it, ah, it was Mark Twain, uh, il scrittrice americano? Sì, credo di sì. So I think that was an American author, writer. American, okay. Sì, americano, sì. Okay, so he was the one who said il secret, il segreto, so that's a G and an R. And the word secret, segreto, it's not a C and an R like in English. Il segreto per farsi strada ed iniziare, so that's Mark Twain. Grazie, signor Twain. Uh, il fallimento è la, la sola opportunità per cominciare di nuovo con più intelligenza. Henry Ford? Sì, Henry Ford, che ha fatto le macchine, Ford. Anche americano, credo, sì. Ok. Uh, l'ultima, l'ultima citazione. Ok. Anche un uomo molto, molto famoso, famosissimo, direi. L'unico modo per iniziare a fare qualcosa è smettere di parlare. <ride> Smette, smettiamo di parlare è iniziare a fare now this is my favorite one because this is what I believe l'unico modo the only way the only means modo means or way <laughs> per that means for doing something so when you have per plus iniziare sometimes that can be to do something or for doing something, okay? So, per on its own, that preposition can mean for, as in questo è per te, or um, it can mean other things like by, if you're talking in terms of placement, like place location. But here it is translated in various ways depending on the structure and the content of the, like, the translation, the, the the English translation of the Italian. So, l'unico modo per iniziare a fare qualcosa. So, the only way for starting to do something, or the only way to start doing something, is what I would say. The only way to start doing something 
per iniziare a fare qualcosa to start doing iniziare a fare qualcosa so another useful thing here is that if you're starting to do something iniziamo a scrivere iniziamo a parlare so if you're starting to do something as in you use the verb to, to start or begin to do something when you use the verb iniziare you follow it with a preposition a plus an infinitive verb okay so per iniziare a fare iniziare a parlare okay that's whether it's conjugated or not it just so happens that there's one infinitive verb followed by another here in fact it's full of infinitive verbs this whole bit here the only way to start doing something that's how I would say it in English e is so the subject of this sentence is all of this l'unico modo per iniziare a fare qualcosa it is e smettere I like that verb smettere means to stop or to quit doing something smettere di so this verb smettere is followed by the preposition di whereas iniziare a is followed by the preposition a when it's then got an infinitive verb after it okay smettere di parlare to stop talking is to stop and then instead of using parlando which is like the gerund form the ing equivalent right um, we use the infinitive verb parlare stop talking smettete di parlare okay uh, to stop talking e so here we've got and which is just an e on its own as opposed to an e on its own with an accent grave a grav, because that is the is from the verb essere and this one here means and okay they sound basically the same but in the written form and in the context of hearing it you'll understand the difference i think l'unico modo per iniziare a fare qualcosa è smettere di parlare e iniziare a fare I can hear my daughter crying out there now, so I'm going to go and get her. And it's perfect timing, okay? Iniziare a fare. So, stop talking and start doing. She must have read my mind. Anyway, I hope that's useful. So, I'm going to send this out to my club members now. Really hope you enjoy that. Um, it's a useful one for me because lots of things are changing in my life. Um, I'm sure there's lots of things changing in your lives at the moment. It's the start, l'inizio di un altro, un nuovo anno scolastico. It's a new start of um, the school year, etc. So, um, cambiano le cose. Things are changing, and that's a good thing. È una cosa molto, molto, molto buona. Um, buona, and. Um, what else? Let's just finish on that last one. Okay, l'unico modo per iniziare a fare qualcosa, the only way to start doing something, è smettere di parlare, stop talking, e iniziare a fare, and start doing. So if there's something that you um, are hoping to start uh, doing, iniziamo, no? Let's start. Andiamo. Okay, alla prossima volta. Uh, grazie. Grazie mille e um, ci vediamo. Ciao.